Hi, it's Beach Baby Bob back with another story. Uh, today is May the 7th and it feels like the middle of December here in Ontario, Canada. It's freezing out. All the buds on all the trees and all the plants are trying to spring up because it is spring, but it's freezing. So I wanted to read this story today called The Mitten and there's a picture of the front of the book. Um, it's one of my favorite, favorite stories because it's about everybody helping everybody else. And um, even though it takes place in the middle of winter, if there was a mitten in my yard today, I'm sure it would be filled with all kinds of creatures trying to keep warm because it's just freezing out here. And I hope it hurries up with that uh, spring weather. Anyway, the mitten. It's by Alvin Treselt. Treselt. Or Treselt. And uh, there was a... Uh, a person by the name of uh, Yaroslava who made the pictures. Uh, this is a story, it's a folk tale, which means it's been around a long time and people keep telling it over and over again in their own way. So the original, I don't know what the original was like, but this story has been told many, many times. And when you um, tell it to somebody else, it'll just be a, a, another version of the mitten, which is great. So try to share the story with other people, even if you haven't got the book. Here we go, the mitten. It was the coldest day of winter and a little boy was trudging through the forest gathering firewood for his grandmother. Bring back all you can find, the old woman had said as she sat knitting a pair of mittens. The north wind blows cold and we must have a good fire to keep us warm. All morning the boy worked, picking up sticks until his sled was well loaded. Then a very strange thing happened. Just as he picked up the last stick, he dropped one of his mittens in the snow. Now, how a boy could do this on the coldest day of winter, I'll never know. But that's the way my grandfather tells the story. Off he went with his load of wood and the mitten was left lying in a snowdrift. As soon as he was out of sight, a little mouse came scurrying through the woods. She was very cold and she spied the little boy's mitten with its feathery fur cuff. She popped right in to get warm. It was just the right size for a tiny mouse. Presently, a green frog came hip-hopping over the snow. Anyone home? She asked when she saw the mitten. Only me, said the mouse, and come in quickly before you freeze. By the way, I'm freezing right now. I think it's about four degrees. They no sooner had settled themselves snugly in the red wool lining when an owl flew down. May I join you in that lovely mitten? he asked. If you mind your manners, replied the mouse, for owls always made her nervous. And don't wiggle around too much, added the frog, because it's a bit tight in here. It wasn't long before a rabbit came down the forest path. Is there room for me in that nice warm mitten? asked the rabbit. It's awfully cold out here. Not much space left, said the mouse and the frog and the owl. But come in, we'll see what we can do. Even before the rabbit had gotten herself tucked in, a fox trotted up to the mitten. And after a good deal of trouble, she got herself in along with the others. 
The mouse was beginning to think maybe she shouldn't have been so generous. But with the bitter cold outside, the wind was blowing, what else could she do? And now, as if things weren't bad enough, the next visitor was a big gray wolf who wanted to come in too. I don't know how we'll manage it, said the mouse, but, but we'll, we'll try. Everyone moved around a bit and finally the wolf was squeezed into the mitten. It was very crowded by now, but at least it was warm. Now it's not snowing today, but it, the weatherman says it might snow tonight. Things had gotten arranged nicely when the animals heard a great snorting. It was a wild boar, and he was very anxious to get in and out of the wind. Oh dear, cried the mouse, for the mitten was already beginning to stretch a little. We just don't have any more room. I'll be very careful, said the boar. With that, he squinched himself into the mitten, along with the mouse and the frog and the owl and the rabbit and the fox and the wolf. I know that this is so because my grandfather told me that that's what happened. But the worst was yet to come, for who should appear but a bear? He was very big and very cold. No room, no room, cried the animals, even before the bear had a chance to speak. Nonsense, said the bear. There's always room for one more. And without so much as a please or a thank you, he began crawling into the mitten. He put his paw in first, and the mitten creaked and groaned. He put his other paw in, and one of the seams popped. Then he took a big breath and pushed himself right in. Now, while all this was going on, along came a little black cricket. She was very old, and her creaky legs ached with the cold. When she saw the mitten, she said to herself, hmm, now that looks like a nice warm place. I'll just hop over and see if I can squeeze in too. Oh, the sun's shining. Now it's warming up. But, ah oh, me, that's all that was needed to finish off the poor old mitten. The cricket had no more than put her first scratchy foot inside when a rip and a snap and the stitches came apart. The old leather cracked and the soft red lining split in half, popping all the animals into the snow. Well, at this very moment, the little boy discovered that he had only one mitten. So he went back to see where he might have dropped the other one. But all he could find were the ripped apart pieces. And he thought he saw a little mouse scurrying away with a bit of red wool perched on her head. It looked very much like the lining from the thumb of his missing mitten. Oh well, said the little boy as he snuggled his cold hand inside his coat. My grandmother will surely have my new mittens finished by now. Then he hurried home with the north wind nipping at his cheeks.
And my grandfather says he never did know what really happened to his mitten. And that's it. That's the end of the story. I loved it because, you know, when, when people or when animals are in trouble and they need help, it's always good to stick together and help. Whenever you can, you help somebody that needs it. If you ever see any people freezing on a cold day or sleeping on the streets of some of these big cities, it looks like they don't have any home and they're freezing and it's cold outside, maybe you could just stop and give them a hand somehow. And that's what this story reminds me of. So if you want it, you got to go to the uh, library and you could, or maybe the internet and you've got to look in the picture book section and under T for Triselt because that's the last name, Alvin Triselt of the author of the book. And remember, it's a folk tale. It was uh, written a long, long time ago and told over and over and over again by lots of storytellers and you're a storyteller too. So tell somebody else this story and maybe you can go get the book. The pictures are wonderful. See you.